Hi, I'm Dave Marks, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the EBS HD 360 amp. For me, it's really important to be able to get good sounds quickly. If I'm on a festival stage or in the studio, no one wants to wait around while I search for a good bass sound. So let's look at how we can get really quickly into this amp. The front panel has an XLR out, so that's me into the front of the house. I plug straight into the front and turn the power on. I can set the gain. When the little red light comes on, when I'm really hitting it, that lets me know it's good. For the compressor, this blue light shows when the compression's kicking in. And I can set the amount of compression depending on the gig. From there, I'm straight into the EQ section. So I have my bass, middle and treble controls depending on what I want the sound to be. For a reggae gig, I might drop out the bright and the treble, boost the low mids and the bass a little bit. If I wanted something that maybe sounded a little bit more like a Marcus Miller type tone, scoop a little mids, add the treble and the bright, crank the bass. If I wanted something to sound like Jacko, take the brightness and the treble off, boost the mids, go back pickup, so that's three completely different bass sounds that I can get really quickly because the controls are simple but very powerful on the front of the amp. Let's look at the advanced features on the HD360. Starting off on the left here we have this character switch. This is basically the smiley face EQ that you get. So with it on, I get that boosted bass, boosted treble, and a little bit less mid-range. Gives you that Marcus Miller type sound. Moving on, we have the filter active switch here. Basically this allows me to turn on and off the EQ. So if I set the EQ up, for example, with all the treble and all the brightness off, and a boost in the low end, filter active on, I get a much more old school sort of 60s type sound. Set it off. And without having to adjust all the dials, I'm back to my pure bass sound. Notch filter is a really useful feature in your EQ. Sometimes we'll turn to a venue. You could be playing electric bass or acoustic or even the double bass and have problems with resonance or feedback. There'll be a particular frequency that when you play it, it's going to really come out louder than all the others. So what we need to do is isolate that frequency and pull it right down. That's exactly what a notch filter does. So if I set it all the way back to notch, I can start at 50 hertz and sweep through all the frequencies. And as I tune this round, I'll find that frequency that goes and suddenly it'll disappear. And that means I've found the right frequency and scooped it right out, solving the problem. Moving on from there, we have the drive control. A lot of bass players don't understand drive. They think when you say drive, you're talking about distortion. This is a different kind of thing. Distortion you'll use in a rock or metal band to get a really aggressive bass sound. But drive here, we're really, we're going for the sound of tubes. We're trying to warm up the bass sound. Even if you don't use drive yourself, a lot of the time when we record, the producer's going to add a little bit of drive to that channel just to warm up the bass sound, fatten it up. So if I set the drive all the way off, and then add it in, and maybe to a more extreme setting. You'll hear you get a boost in the level, but also that sort of warmth and the large sort of low mid range sound in your bass really comes into its own there. So those controls will help you with setting sounds. And then finally here, our balanced output, the XLR that we send whenever we're sending to the front of house on a gig or to the uh, recording desk in the studio, we have three settings, post EQ, speaker simulation and ground lift. These can be a lifesaver. Post EQ allows you to send your EQ setting through to the desk. So if you have a really specific bass sound you want them to capture, hit that and it'll go straight through. If you want to give them the flat sound, turn it off and they'll just get the pure sound of your bass without the EQ. Speaker simulator is very helpful if you're recording dry, so your signal is going straight into the desk, there's no mics on your cabs, and you want to try and get a slightly livelier sound. This helps you emulate the sound of a mic cabinet along with your dry sound.
And then finally, the ground lift. A lot of people don't realize why this is important, and hopefully you'll never have to use it. But if you're in a venue where there's bad wiring, maybe when the lights come on on stage, the amp starts buzzing. And this will keep going down the signal into the front of house, and they'll turn you down in the mix because the bass sound is bad. Hitting the ground lift will kill this hum and gives you back your pure bass sound. So this can be a lifesaver in those sort of bad emergency situations. So that's a roundup of the advanced features on the amp. Next up, let's turn it around and have a look at what you can do on the back. Let's take a look at the back panel on this amp. A lot of players just plug into the front, get their sound, and never look around the back, and there are great features built in here that you should know about. Starting out from the left-hand side, our mains input is a three-pin kettle lead, industry standard, but they have a little fuse here, which you can pop straight out. So if your fuse dies in the middle of a gig and you have to unscrew panels and things, it's a nightmare. With this, you can just pop the fuse out, switch it, pop it back in again. It takes about 10 seconds. Moving across, we have a control for phantom power. Phantom power allows you to power other items in your signal chain. So maybe your bass or a pedal, you can power them from the amp. If I'm playing a gig with an active bass and I'm worried the battery's going to die, I run a stereo cable from my bass into the amp, turn the phantom power on, and now the amp powers my bass. I can do the same thing with a pedal if I'm bringing my octave bass out onto a gig or my multi-comp, and I don't want to have to put batteries in it or I'm worried about the adapter for a different country, I can just bring my stereo cable and the amp powers the pedal. Beyond that, we have these two inputs for the remote. This is the EBS RM4. This is a foot switch that allows you to turn the character on and off, turn the EQ stage on and off, turn the drive on and off, and also mute the amp. So that gives me a lot of control over the front panel without having to go and adjust any knobs in the gig. We have a tuner out here. The tuner out sends signal even whenever the front is muted. So if I put the mute on, no one in the audience hears it. But my tuner gets signal so I can tune silently on stage. That's very important in terms of looking and sounding professional. We have a line out. We can send the line out from this amp to another amp so I can run two rigs at the same time but control the volume from this one. And then we have an effects loop here. The effects send and return. I can take all my pedals and put them into this effects loop so that I get my bass pure into the amp and then I can adjust how much of the pedals are used. So say you wish that your distortion pedal, you could blend the clean and the distorted sound. You can. Using this FX mix, I have my pure sound from the bass. If I have it at 100%, I'll have pure distortion. 50 is a mix and I can dial it everywhere in between to get that really good blend sound. For connecting the amp up to your cabs, we're using Speak-On connectors. They're serious, heavy-duty, pro-level connectors there. They're never going to rattle loose and they last forever. We can also use different speaker cabinets here. We can range from 8 down to 2 ohms. So if I have a 4 ohm cabinet, say I'm using a 4x10, it's going to cope with that fine. If I use two 4 ohm cabinets, it changes the resistance down to 2 ohms. Not a problem either. So there's lots of versatility between the different kinds of cabs you can use with these amps.